public hearing on special use permit to allow a bed and breakfast operation in single family residence district is opened at 542. Mr. Heath, can you give us a quick summary? The uh, Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing at the request of owner Diana Roberts Strahan that's here this evening for a specific use permit allowing a bed and breakfast in a single family residence at 306 Mission Street. 20 letters were sent out to 22 properties uh, within a 200 foot radius of 306 Mission. There were two affirmative responses and six protests. And because of the six protests, which were over the 20% area, the planning and zoning decided uh, to uh, vote at that time against it, but it still appeals to the council uh, naturally. So it was a four to zero vote because of traffic issues, uh, parking, and the streets being there. That was the planning and zoning's statements at the time. Mrs. Strahan was not there at that meeting. She is here this evening. Then at this time, um, Ms. Strahan, would you like to come to the podium? My name is Diana Strahan. I live at 306 Mission Street here in Glenrose, Texas, and I've resided there since 1981. Uh, my plan for my retirement was to have a small bed and breakfast of one, one bedroom and uh, it's been remodeled and everything, and there was a problem with the traffic. Well, I can't change the width of the street, but my driveway can hold six, six cars, three end-to-end, -end, in two rows. And that's as good as I can do, and I would love to have a bed and breakfast there. Thank you. Any members of the public wishing to speak to this matter? Okay. There are being no further comments. This public hearing is closed at 544. Agenda okay. 6 C discussion, consideration, and possible action on approval of special use permit to allow a bed and breakfast occupation in a single family residential district. Um, this was the public hearing that was held previously. Council, any, any questions? Councilwoman Ramsey? Uh, in the past, we received the copies of the letters, and there were six protests. Would you mind telling me what the protests, all six, I mean, okay. what the basic protests I, were? I have those letters here, and the summary that we put on the sheet uh, was parking, narrow street, and traffic. Some of the items would be uh, really, uh, superficial. Uh, you can disagree with a neighbor or say say something, but uh, that that is 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 very minor. It's really not the sort of thing that promotes um, uh, attack. I could read. Uh, here's one in favor. It's on the from the other street. Uh, should be a nice addition to the neighborhood. That's two in favor. Um, <coughs> although bread and breakfast sounds lovely. Uh, uh, you know, basically uh, disagreeing with the with the, the people, maybe the customers and the and the, those there. I don't wish to read that. Uh, I would like to know how many rooms uh, they would be using. My number one concern is parking. Uh, the street is too small for for parking. And I believe we had a, a picture of that street mission street, and that was uh, slide. 12, uh, way, way back. Okay, I know they're not numbered. I number my little list. Um, uh, one person said, I want this to remain a residential district. It still is. Okay, so that is a, that is a weak <coughs> protest. Again, three of them stated traffic. Property values will drop. Uh, that is a fairly soft attack because you don't know that from one room bed and breakfast. Uh, here's a here's a very lengthy one. Uh, I do not want to live next door to a business. A business. This is a home occupation, not a business. 
But see, because of the number of protests, even though not all of them are strong, when you narrow it down, the summary of these protests are uh, uh, tra traffic. Um, where is that thing? There it is. <laughs> uh, parking, narrow street, and traffic. That's it. Okay, there the, is. Their driveway is, is uh, I'm sorry, 16 feet wide. According to our ordinance, a nine foot and a nine foot. A little concrete on the side would allow three cars to park <coughs> at length and a fourth one, not calling it a tandem because we're not allowed to have tandem parking. But we could have four parking spaces. So the parking on site uh, truly is not an issue with a little added. And any time you get into these uh, specific use permits, the, the planning and zoning and the council have the right to actually specificate that this will be good for a year and we will review it at that time or you must do uh, this can only use one bedroom and you can write the specifics. Okay, and how many, the, the bed and breakfast was for the occupancy of how many people? Uh, for one bedroom. She stated one bedroom, single one bedroom would be so what, perhaps one vehicle a family or a single person or a couple or whatever to, to use one bedroom. Now it takes it takes a super majority because the council uh, voted for zero uh, due to the impact of, of the, the letters at the time and, and the traffic issue. And I believe uh, one person on the planning and zoning lives in the neighborhood. Well, two do, but <laughs> out of the 200 foot. <laughs> and the six, the six properties that are highlighted on this diagram the six properties are the, the protesting properties. The coast. So they are the ones directly touching the property. Everyone that directly touches the property. Send a letter of opposition. Are there any other bed and breakfast on uh, Mission Street? No, 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 because it's it is a narrow street and it's all, it's all uh, residential. Uh, most cases, smaller uh, middle class, working class houses. How long has the homeowner lived? Uh, in the residence? 31 years. 31 years. 31 years, yeah. Councilman I have a question to show the difference between if I want to rent a bedroom out to someone. That's not a business, that's just renting it out. It's a home-based business. In your, in your zoning ordinance, a home occupation is allowed in the R1 district. Uh, we don't vote on that. What we vote on is, is the specifics of the property, if it would allow itself to fit that home occupation. So you have extra rules assigned to the specific property. When we voted on that very large house on that hill with the large acreage and the very large rooms and, and openness in an area next to B2, it was a very easy vote to look and say this, this uh, obviously fits a home occupation. It will not change the character of the neighborhood. The neighbors felt that it may uh, affect them, and whether it does or not, that sometimes is a little bit subjective. You're guessing what could happen in the future. Uh, if you choose to supermajority uh, uh, go for this uh, specific use permit, uh, an attachment of conditions and review uh, should be left with it, uh, or uh, should be assigned to it. In other words, no more than one room used. This will be reviewed in one year. Uh, and we, we will go ahead and okay. You can okay or deny. And, and either, either way, but if you okay it, you have to have all four votes. Um, just for future, Mr. Heap, to have some other pictures of 
you know, some slightly better pictures of this property might have been more helpful because okay, what slide? looking at it from the because parking is apparently seems to be the key issue. Okay. Okay. There there is a slide here if we can go forward. There is the driveway. Next slide. Okay, you, you recognize those two street vehicles. Street parking. Those, okay. yeah. Uh, in other words, if one car on the street pretty well impedes the street. It's but I'm noticing in the driveway where that pickup is, that still appears to go further back. Is that also it, it the street hands deep, property? It is a, it yes. is so it is deep. It is very deep, but the, the present ordinance on parking states no tandem parking. Therefore, it would have to be 18 wide. There would have to be the condition of adding two feet of concrete on the, on the bushes side there to uh, make sure that they can park over close enough to one, two, three in parallel in the fourth car. <coughs> is, okay. uh, but is that is design. an option that the council has the council available has. to it. Yes, a, we, we would want attach to that as it. a condition of offering the specific use. Council? Council I've, I've been through so many small Texas towns and they're extremely quaint. They're, they're back and they're, they're lined with bed breakfasts and, and I don't know if they're all special use. They made an ordinance to cover an entire area so you can't be bed breakfast and it's, it's very quaint. You start picking which houses you might want to stay in. Um, it's hard to overrule a community when you got six neighbors that all say, we don't want you to have something like that. But, Judging from the house, uh, if it's not improved on appearance, it may not succeed as a bed and breakfast. But I, I think they would probably, you know, pick it up a little bit, clean it up, and I think it'd be an attraction more than anything. It's out of the way. Um, I don't know my thoughts on it. I'm not opposed to the mix. Not some more. Uh, having lived on the street for 24 years, uh, and I have several rent properties around me, I would rather see a bed and breakfast any day over a, rental, over a, rent, a rent property. Okay. And nobody, you don't have to resolve for a rent property, of course. Mm -hmm. I've mean, had some experience with rent, with the, the rental properties around me on this street. But again, taking take into consideration the neighbors too. I live, right. And I live very close to them. So. Councilman Ramsey, you're looking. Um, I'm not opposed, ma'am. Yeah, you were really concentrating. I could tell. That's what I was like. Well, I'm not opposed to to bed breakfast. What I'm about, as long as we put restrictions, like you're saying, one year. Um, <coughs> specific type things in there. Um, I guess my concern is when we're looking at another property in that area um, with people opposing the changes there, um, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable ruling against the neighborhood. But I have to agree with Councilman Jones. I think it's a quaint situation. Um, but I'd like to see, I'd like before we approve this, I'm not saying it's what we need to do, before we approve this, I would like for us to put together something that has restrictions on it for us to look to have before we approve it. Does that make sense? Yes, the, the restrictions should insist on on-site parking. Uh, it should insist on a review in one year because of the opposition if you choose to, to go with it. Now I will add this, none of those that did write and oppose it have come this evening. And that, that there is an effect. And Mrs. Freyhan did not uh, show up the first, uh, the, the first night, uh, though none of them did either. But they, they had put that in writing. And so a lot of times when your, your opposition is, is uh, fairly aggressive and then, and then not followed through. Um, um, 
puts it in that if, gray area. I just, I, I don't, I just want to know the restrictions before I you know, approve the special use permit. I mean, because I'd like to see us override it for at least one year. But I want to know what the restrictions are. The city Secretary, if yes. we postpone a vote on this until next council meeting, do we have to do a public hearing again? We've already had the public hearing. We've had the public hearing. Okay. Um, then, with that in mind, Council um, or Councilman Mitchell. Uh, I'm in favor of a, so to speak, a one-year trial. Uh, I'll, and I'll, and on-site parking improved. I would agree with that. Okay. Right. No then, part, if no part of that on-site means it's in the driveway, it has to be in the driveway, it cannot be in the street. For one car and Pardon one me. bedroom, including you in one year. I live on the okay. street, and even when the neighbors got someone out in front, I can't even back out. Right. That's how narrow it is. Yes. Then what I would put forth to the council is that um, we postpone a final vote on this until Mr. Heath can bring forward the next council meeting with what the restrictions would be. Mr. Heath? Yes. Okay. Something that is specifically written up um, it, it, it with really the restrictions. It's about two sentences. We could write them at this time if, you, if this is what you wish and say. Um, uh, I just think by us having that one year specific... That gives you a chance that, to... That okay, it well also then. helps the neighbors to realize that it's not, it may not be as bad as they think, because I, I, again, I agree with Councilman Jones. I, I'd like to see a quaint and Councilman Moore rather than a rental house that you know is not going to be kept up, for what chances are. But I, I'd like to just have the restrictions there. And if you could do this, as, you know, those now and we just well, I'd rather do, do it now and then. <laughs> Okay. Make a whole agenda item. Okay, well then we need to get the specific use, we need to get the motion specific done Specific use permit allowed for the, uh, for the bed and breakfast at such and such address for a one year period provided no parking um, in, in the street. It's not perfect wording, but... And uh, uh, off street parking off street. provided for for one extra car, so that'd be three, a minimum of three spaces. So I'll have to have three spaces, which means the driveway would be expanded by two feet on the one side. And for straight home, willing to expand it the, that width? Mr. Strayhorn, can we step up here for a minute? Please, the podium. <clears throat> because that includes her parking also. Yes. Has with, three spaces. The width of the driveway will handle two cars the way it is in width and three cars in length. Because the neighbor to would be to my left, they have used up the the feet footage that you know the, the grace footage as well as the other neighbor did, but that doesn't apply in this situation. The there, there is very seldom if ever anybody parking in front of my house because it's true, you, there isn't enough space. You get enough room for two cars, one to go each direction. But uh, as far as the parking is concerned, there's plenty of parking in my driveway for, for six cars. But Ms. Fran, it's been done. Under, understand that what Mr. Heath is saying is you cannot have a car behind another car in the driveway. I Each yeah. one has to be able to independently move out, back out of the driveway, and 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 leave. You can't have them done in tandem. It has enough room for two cars, but not a third car in, uh, you know, across. There's enough room for two cars easily. Okay, so, but Mr. Heath, did I understand you to say she would need to have three parking spaces? That 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 is your subdivision ordinance number. Um, you, you could lean on the, the, the fact that it's an existing driveway. 16 foot is an older standard that we did use for two cars. 
uh, is very tight because you're hitting the bushes kind of on the one side and you're kind of next to the grass to get another car on the side that you could, you could uh, carefully go by. Another, another item you have, and that's in the, in, in the ordinance on bed and breakfast, that these are, these are temporary maximum of 30 days. You can't have someone that turn this into a rental where the same person well, stays. Absolutely not. <laughs> not. Not my house. This time, but we rented out. If you stipulate off street parking only, yes. off street parking only, no on street park, and review in one year, you would be in a fairly safe position. Lots of rooms. In one bedroom. And one bedroom. One bedroom. One front bedroom with full bath connecting to it. Um, I, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Tandem parking to me is one car behind the other, is that yes, correct? correct? So if people that are going to stay in that one bedroom come with two cars, well, where does that leave her car parked? The, the one bedroom does not have two cars. Uh, if my husband and wife come separately or two people come separately, I, I mean, I'm covering. I'm, okay. If I, if, you know, you've got to take into account where that third car is going to be. Either that or the other person parks their car in town. And if you count that as, uh, now that's a big pick up there with, with wide mirrors. If your wheel is on the right side over there, on that, on either one of those pictures you want to look at, kissing the bushes or the grass, the others can come up and go over, come up and go over. You have two owner cars and generally in a situation like this, you would count that bedroom as one. The second car that rarely would come, uh, you would not design it for that. Councilman Jones? Is there any prohibition about any resident on, on that street from parking in the street right now? No, there is not. But this would be a home occupation with specific uh, assignment to this occupation. To the, to the because you're adding property. something unusual. Could she park in the street? Oh, I. I know you wouldn't want to. I, mean, oh, I have a back lot that I wouldn't park in the street anyway. I understand. I mean, that's a, that's an interesting. Can, can you access that back lot from oh, yeah. this driveway? From this driveway? Yes, you can, but I don't. See over to the to the right. It could get, you could drive all the way through to the back of that side. It is just barely wide enough, but you can. But I have an opening off the, off of the Ross Street that goes on to the back lot, which is also my property. So you have another access and possible potential parking space. <coughs> uh -huh. Okay, and I think that's what that's that's that's, that's what, what the councilwoman Ramsey was trying to get to is we need to have all of the vehicles <coughs> off the street and well, off parked on the property, whether it's just two, and making sure that there is sufficient. So, I would say probably ensure that there is sufficient parking for three vehicles. Councilwoman Ramsey. Yes. Now that I understand okay. that. Yes. Yeah. That's. Yeah, usually by back lot, I, I mean, you probably six or eight cars back there. I mean, I don't have anything back there, but lawn, I don't want anything back there. I like my forest in my yard. But I think, and Mr. Heath, are there going to be some requirements to be able to make that into parking area that she's going to need to meet? The cost and, and the probability of paving or concreting and many, making the curb cut would be a lot of money. The better option is to add uh, a couple of feet of, of, of hard surface beside the existing driveway or count it as uh, con conforming to the ordinance of the day when the house was built. Okay, but what, what, the space. what the council is looking at is you know, requiring the, the, surface, the exception so would not allow three parking in the grass. Parking yes, at least three spaces. At least three spaces. If there's 
complained to me where we want three spaces in here. Pardon? Why three spaces for, for the property owner and two additional cars? In the no. event that, you know. No, it's not that. It's not. The, uh, uh, all, all residences are required to have two off-street parking, parking spaces. In addition, because you're doing an SUP for a bread and breakfast of which there's one bedroom, you are required to have one additional space. You don't have to have two. That may be very rare, but uh, it would be three in total. So is there prohibition on tandem parking only referring to bed and breakfast? No. Because, I mean, if she, she living there, could she not park tandem if she had two cars? Pre-existing, they undoubtedly do that unless they have several cars at a, at a larger event and they would squeeze into the bushes. 16 foot used to be what most subdivi subdivision ordinances would, would list as a two car garage, as a two car drive. Uh, it's gone up to 18 in most uh, cities. It looks like to me there's plenty of room to, to park there on the existing 16 feet. I don't believe you can get two cars around there. Okay. Just looking at it. Can we, do we have what we need then for a motion to approve an SUV for a bed and breakfast providing no parking in street, off street parking only, one bedroom and review in one year. And that's at 306 Mission Street. Do I? Well, before we do the motion, okay, this is where we had Ms. Ray Horn from Bar to sit down because this, oh, yes. this is just a thing. Okay. okay. In order to overturn. The P and Z's motion, we have to vote four yeses. Correct. Right. Because we were confused before and some Super people voted no. Super majority. Super, yeah, but I mean, I... You have to have four for the vote. Right. I just want to make sure that we're all on that same page. Four for the vote. Okay. Okay. So do I have a motion to approve? and SUP for 306 Mission Street as a bed and breakfast of one bedroom, no on-street parking, three off-street parking spaces for a period or to be reviewed in one year. Did I get everything? One, we need one bedroom in there. I have one bedroom in there. Oh, I'm sorry. It was at the beginning, I think. Okay, I'm but sorry. I, but I was writing. <laughs> we got it on? Okay. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. I'll make that motion. I have a motion from Councilman Mitchell. Do I have a second? I have a second from Councilman Jones. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman Moore? No. Councilman Ramsey? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. That's three in favor, one opposed. The motion um, fails because we do not have the required supermajority to overturn. <laughs>